fucking duty. Are you a gamer? No, no, not at all. Me neither. I, I remember whenever I was a kid, I, I very deliberately like thought to myself, there'll never be a time when I'm not playing games. Like I, really? I thought I would forever. Because I remember like there are adults who are around, especially in particular, probably my stepdad, he didn't play games. I'm like, how the fuck do you not play games? And then now I'm just like, how who the fuck has time? You're right, exactly. I don't, I don't. When I was a kid, I was really into it, but like... I got burnt out on it so fast. I don't know. Like I, um, I, it's I'm just, I have a hard time being in front of screens for too long a time. You know, oh, like yeah. doing that or just watching movies. Like I can't even watch a full movie. Yeah, you know, I have to like break it up into segments. And really? Because like yeah, it's like I hate man social media. That's like such a double edged sword because I want to get rid of all of my apps and never have to worry about it again. But at the same time, it's so important for comedy and stuff. You know, it's like I, there's little things I like about it here and there, but I really wish it wasn't so important to spend so much time on it because it just, Oh, it just gets so unnerving and it's just, it's annoying to keep up with. Like, just like, I hate like having them just look at like my phone like or like anytime i have to create a facebook event for the next show next month's show it's like i gotta send all the invites i'm just like laying there just like mindlessly on my phone just <laughs> clicking invite 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 yeah it drives me crazy man like i'd rather just be like i'm you know i like to read and write and kind of be out like actually like doing things you yeah know? it's just like it, it's if uh during the pandemic was like the one time that I really had a chance to like, like two different times. I like spent a week with my phone in airplane mode, Mm -hmm. just like did not deal with it at all. And it was like, Oh, it was beautiful. It was amazing. Oh, I felt so much better. I just like my mental health, just like, like within a couple days, just like elevated that much. And I just felt so much better. And then now we're back to the grind. It's like, (laughs) all right, I got (laughs) to, gotta be on it again it sucks because it's like how do you build a brand without Without, exactly it's impossible it literally impossible you're right it's like it's like (laughs) it blows me away because there are certain individuals who like you don't have to be on social media to be successful like in life in the grand scheme of things because there are plenty of people who do that right there are so many people who will like just focus on living in the real world and they'll be super successful, but nobody will know who they are. But if you're in an industry where you need people to know who you are and you need to have a brand, it's like, it feels so impossible to just do it all in, in person, right? right. Like how, exactly. how else can you connect with so many people? It would take so, it would take so long. It right. Would take, it would take, it would take your entire life to do it. And then it would just right. be like, yeah, yeah. it would just be like over. But uh yeah i mean it with i mean especially in the entertainment industry it is an absolute must i mean there's Dude. no because it's also you know i hate to call it a competition but you're also you know there's other people in the you race are and for it's sure. and it's you you know you those people have, if those people have that clear edge on you you're never going to yeah and I, I i didn't worry about it for a long time until cuz like i remember when i first started doing comedy i was really worried about it and then actually uh, one of my friends, uh, Andrew Frank, I don't know if you know him. He's a, Mm-mm. he, uh, is an amazing comedian. He moved from, he moved f- a few years ago, but, um, incredible comedian, uh, and a good friend of mine. And Where's he at now? Jail. He's, <laughs> no, he's <laughs> he, moved, he moved to jail. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no. he's in Seattle. Seattle. Oh, sick. Um, yeah. So he, I, I remember he wasn't very prevalent on social media and like I asked him about that and he was like, He's like, you know, I, he's like, before I start getting involved in that, he's like, I just want to make sure I want to like perfect my craft first and then, and then bring it out there so that once people do start to, um, you know, see me and start to recognize yeah. me, then they'll see, like, I'll have something to give. Instead that makes of, you sense. Know? And so I was like, okay, that makes a lot of sense. And so I, I really didn't. Until I started like running my show at the funny, but like the the funny bone show was ma- was mainly how I started becoming prevalent on social media. Okay. Um, but then I didn't start uh, promoting my own brand just for myself as a comedian until probably within like the last couple of years. Because within the last couple of years is when I was like finally like okay, now I have material that. I barely even, I don't even really do anymore. So I can just put that out there and not worry about people like seeing that and then seeing me live and stuff. I can be doing, I can like, I, I come up with enough stuff that I can put out there and then have different stuff for yeah. when I do my live shows yeah. and everything. And so like, um, so it's been within the last couple of years that I've even started doing that, but which is a good thing. I've definitely gained a lot more, uh, 
a bigger fan base and you know more popularity within the last couple of years by doing that but at yeah. the same time it's like ugh, keeping up with it is like dude a nightmare and just like learning i'm just like so bad with technology so like learning how to like do all the video editing and the apps and everything. And right. You're it's just your like phone the whole so time. Much. Oh my God, so much. And the whole time I'm doing it, like in the back of my mind, I'm just like, you could be writing, you could be writing, you could be writing. And I'm like, <laughs> like, how do I cut and edit uh, clips? And how do I yeah. add captions to, you know, like learn yeah. how to do all that? And, Cause it takes me so long to do. Like, I know, like, I just wish I was better. If I was better at technology, then it wouldn't be such a big deal. Cause like I have friends who'll just be like, and like, right. they do it. And you like, I do it. I'm like, but I'm, I, I'm like sitting there forever trying to figure out how to do these things. And, um, but I mean, it's necessary. It's just, it's some of the busy work that comes along with anything, you know? Right. Yeah. I mean, I guess ideally you get to a spot to where eventually you can like maybe resource that out to somebody. It's like, Hey man, can you like, then you can spend your time doing the things that you want to be doing. Right. Writing. Yeah. Eventually it'll get to that point. Yeah. But but, I mean, early on you got to do all of it yourself. It's all a necessary evil, especially when you're like a team of one. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Fuck, man. How long you been running the show at the Funny Bone? That has been going. That'll be five years in August. Wow, that's yeah. sick. Yeah, it's. Uh, it was. It was a little. Uh, obviously, COVID slowed things down a lot. Um, right. It was. Uh, it sucks because we didn't get to do our our four year anniversary show. Um, because you know, like August, it was still kind of yeah, everything's, um, kind of everything's iffy. Things still messed up. I hadn't even been able to bring it back yet. But there's just the one location, right? I know the second one's opening up. Yeah, is it just the George, one, right? Right now, it's just the one in Westport. But in the fall, uh, they're opening one in St. Charles. That's sick. Yeah, yeah I'm really excited about that. That's yeah. gonna be a big. Because there used to be a second location off of like 141. Oh and... uh, yeah, Valley Park. Yeah. Yeah, there used to be a lot actually. There used to be one in South County. Really? Uh, right across uh, in that plaza with a. Uh, uh, well, now it's Marcus, but it's like the Ronnie's Werenberg Cinema. Yeah. Um, across from Joey B's, uh, there okay. was one in Fairview Heights. Really. And then there was one in Valley Park. I was actually the last comedian on that stage, which I don't know if that's a that's a good thing or a bad. Thing. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm just a bad omen, but. Um, uh, yeah, that but that closed down a few years ago, and then so yeah, it's only been the one in Westport for years now, and now. But I think I, I, I think. Valley Park was just Valley Park at Fairview Heights. They were just bad locations. Really? Uh, they're they're the type of locations that like you had to know where you were going to get there. It wasn't just like a, you could just see it. And mm. Like Westport's good because it's in a plaza where there's a like it's right below the Sheridan. So there's a ton of people um, that are like we get a lot of walk-ins from people who are like just like in town for a couple weeks on business and yeah. stuff, you know, and they're yeah. just like looking for things to do There's during a lot the night. Going on right there, and, I mean, yeah, and then you, you have Westport, Westport, Social, uh, Westport exactly, which is great. Fish, that, was, that was big. Fuzzy's Tacos, right? The train Kobe, wreck. Kobe Steakhouse. There's a ton Dude. of things there, uh, so there's a lot of walk. Uh, walking traffic, right? You know? So that helps a lot. Um, I like the club too. It's like it's an intimate setting. Mm-hmm. I like that. It's lo- low ceilings, a little bit different than yes. like like helium. Exactly. Um, I like the setting. It's a good one. It's a great. At, I mean, it's perfect acoustics for comedy. Um, yeah, that tight, intimate space, the low ceilings, the brick. I mean, the you, laughs just bounce around. You prefer that setting, of course. Yeah, oh, 100 percent. As opposed to like a, like a bigger room, right? Exactly. Well, I mean, just any community. You know, I mean, that's like. The, Smaller rooms are just better for comedy. Yeah. I mean, the acoustics, you know, it's like you don't um, – uh, when you have those huge rooms with, like, really high ceilings, the laughs get lost mm, up in there, you know. Really? Yeah. And, like, oh. when, when it's, and then it also, it's also harder to – for those laughs to make other people laugh because laughter is, you know, it's contagious mm-hmm. and people, that's why people are grouped together because they're like a herd and, you know, they like work in a herd mentality. So if some people are laughing really close to them then the other people are laughing. That's why people, they group to people so close together. Right. It's that energy transference. Exactly. And so, um, so yeah, I mean, that's why the funny bone is such a coveted club to perform in. Cause you can just, once you get started in there, you can just rip, man. Yeah. Like if you're, if you're on a roll, man, you can make the place <laughs> shake. Like yeah. it's, it's, it's a awesome. cool little setting, man. I really like. One time, uh, my fiance were there, and um, there was this one lady. She was just like in the back, kind of by herself. I can only assume that she was with the comic who was up there, cause she laughed so fucking hard at everything that he said, and we were laughing harder at her laugh than <laughs> yeah. anything else. Yeah, sometimes that's what I mean. <laughs> hey, we'll take that too. I mean, as long as people are laughing. Yeah, yeah, that's all fucking matters, dude. But so it's called the the best of STL. Yeah, best of STL showcase. Uh, it's once a month. Uh, Oh, it's always on a Wednesday. Uh, which Wednesday kind of depends on the schedule. I mean, sometimes 
it, it can it can uh, honestly vary. I mean, sometimes it's the first Wednesday of the month, sometimes the last. Um, you know, sometimes in the middle. It just it totally depends uh, on like headliner schedule yeah. and just like kind of my schedule. Sometimes I. Um, sometimes I end up like waiting like a month and a half for the next one just because like I, you know, I've got other things going on. I kind of need that time to promote it and everything. Uh, but I mean, if, uh, if people like follow me on social media, you can always just see me posting, um, when the next one's going to be. And, uh, the cool thing about my show is that, uh, if you mention my name at the box office, you and all your friends get in free. Oh, really? So, yeah. Yeah. It's, oh, uh, sick. Um, so that's been a, yeah, that was always a huge, um, uh, help with uh, getting people, you know, it's like no, Wednesdays I'm doing. are tough. To, yeah, get, Wednesdays are a tough day to to make it out for people. So we, you know, we want people in the seats and you know buying drinks and stuff. So, yeah. Uh, so you know, I I dish out a lot of free tickets and stuff. And yeah. Um. Yeah, it's been a ride. I mean, it's been a it's definitely been a roller coaster. Um. I mean, the first two years of it were really a struggle. I didn't when I first got asked to do the show. I had, I had very very little experience with producing, mm-hmm. and so uh, the first two years were definitely a struggle. Getting people out almost got canceled several times. Um, Just a complete learning experience. Yeah, and then um, with like like my sister's actually um, her like job. She does a lot of uh, social media marketing, and so she uh, helped me with a lot of things and like taught me certain things. Uh, gave me different like insights and uh like links to like things that i could kind of research myself and then i just sort of busted my ass and i started i learned like video editing for like promotion i learned like uh social media uh, Mm -hmm. advertisement and marketing and uh learned like a lot of different type of promotion styles and um it sort of just came together and then um about two uh two years in like it became like an overnight success i mean there was like one i remember one month we had we had like 15 people the next we had uh like 50 and then from there uh the next one we had 150 oh nice and then the next one after that we had almost 200 and then after that for the next like year and a half two years in a row we had anywhere between 250 and 300 people what does but, that feel like uh it was i mean it uh, it was such a weight off my shoulders to know that all this work that i'd finally yeah two years finally, of yeah, busting your fucking ass yeah dude. exactly i mean it's oh uh, it's euphoric <laughs> it, to, to know that it finally actually went somewhere yeah. and like meant something yeah did something and it yeah, it was it was it was beautiful. Honestly, it was I I miss I miss that a lot because I mean once COVID happened, um since since COVID, since we've brought it back after COVID, it's been a real struggle. You're like um, back to like year one. Yeah, uh, I mean I wouldn't or say two. that far. Um, two two I would and a half. Say, <laughs> yeah, I would say. Uh, in the, the last few shows we've had. The last show was good. Last show we had 75 people, which I'll take. I mean during these times. Yeah. Um, the show before that was maybe like 40. Mm. Um, so yeah, like back to like early, like early on numbers. To, yeah. Yeah. So, um, I think things will pick back up. It's just a lot of, a lot of people are still really iffy about going out, you know, but we take all the necessary precautions, you know, yeah. uh, temperature checks at the door, social distancing, you know, you're wearing your masks, um, until you get seated, uh, you know, but we keep people, you know, six feet apart and, uh, there's a, that we have a, big like air filtration system going on well, okay. through the club. Okay, keep oxygen so, flowing yeah. through. Are yeah. you worried about catching COVID at these shows? No, not really. I'm not. I'm not, honestly. Stay the fuck home if you don't want to. <laughs> I'm, I'm honestly not worried about it. Like, like, I mean, it's not like I I, I wear my mask and, you know, like I, I, I follow the rules and everything like that. But honestly, I'm like – I'm like I'm personally not worried about it. Um, The only thing that like that would po- – like I'm not worried about myself getting it. The only thing that really – worries me is like if i was to get it and spread it to someone that's very susceptible like that would um that it would be uh fatal to that's the only thing but i'm like i'm really not around anyone like that yeah uh, so it's like but i mean i that's go just living though i feel like i go i i do shows i mean since since covid let up i've probably been around I mean, a minimum of 10,000 people without masks, and I've never had a had a problem. And I'm not saying, you know, it, ne- it could never happen, you know? Like, I'm not saying – I'm not one of those, like, COVID's fake. And, right. You know, it's not, it's definitely a real thing. Right, exactly. Um, But I'm not worried about getting it myself. I, I, I'm, I, I'm young. 
I I leave a, I leave a live a very healthy lifestyle. Like I'm I'm very into uh, nutrition, and you know I um, I work out, I, I exercise, I I you know I drink a lot I drink a lot of water. Like I'm you know I'm not like you know some sleaze ball or anything like that. Um, I'm not overweight. I'm not old. I don't have any pre you know any major pre existing conditions. Right. You know it's like if I got it, you know it's gonna be like everyone else in my you know that's like me is they would feel like a, a mild flu for a couple right. days and be fine, you know? Uh, but I know there are other people who could catch it. That'll, you know, it'll be a, a huge problem for, and it, for, for those people, yeah, I'd say, you know, it's something to be a little more cautious about and everything. But like for myself, I'm not worried. About, I don't Right. Know. Yeah. I feel like you could probably apply that logic to a lot of things, right? It's like, you got to assess the situation for yourself. And right. if you're, if you're okay, then yeah. You know, um, don't, don't, uh, it's tough, you know. It's, yeah, don't it's, quit living your life. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's tough. Um, but I mean, I but I totally understand um, for some people, you know, like a lot of my regulars in my show were um, older people. Yeah. You know, like people in their, um, you know, fifties uh, and up. You know, f- uh, between like fifty and sixty. You know, some people in their forties and stuff. And you yeah. know, a lot of those people are still really cautious about coming out. And I totally understand. I yeah. Know, I'm not like upset with anyone for not coming back out to the shows. I get it. You know, it's, there's weird times we're living right. in. Right. You know, so. But there's just something so awesome about going to a comedy show, dude. I oh, mean, of course. There's just nothing, there's nothing. Yeah, better. And I think they, I think they're like, they want to, and they're right. like, they're, they are, they're ready to, they, yeah. you know, they would love to, you know, like a lot of them message me and they're like, I can't tell you how much I can't wait to come back out to your shows and everything. But you know, I just can't risk it right now. And I yeah. totally get that. You know, there's, you know, I, but but yeah, that's been uh, that's been one thing that's like been pretty fun about bringing it back is that like a lot of people are coming these you know last few months are coming out for entertainment for the first time since before COVID mm. happened, and the energy is just insane. Is it- like people just are just so happy to see live entertainment again. Yeah. That like people are just the crowds are just electric. Yeah, I still haven't went to a live co- like comedy show since things have kind of been opening back up. I I really need to do that. It's absolutely one of like my fiance and I's like favorite things to do. Yeah, yeah. There's just nothing better. Oh yeah, it's and, and that's the thing. I mean, it's crazy how many people you find out like don't even know that live comedy is happening around, or just like don't understand how much different it is from like watching it on Netflix. You know, like a yeah. lot, a lot of people, because like the way I promoted my show, um, I reached a lot of people who didn't know that com- live comedy even happened in St. Louis. Really? And just had never been to a live comedy show before. And so a ton of people came and saw my show. That was their first live comedy show. And they would be like, oh, my God, I had no – like, it was just, like, opening up a whole new world to them. Like, yes. I, I got so many regulars out of people who are just, like – I'm so happy that like I I found out about this because yeah. like I had no idea that comedy shows were this much fun. Like they were just like I just like I didn't think did realize there was that much of a difference between watching it on Netflix and being there. And it really is. It's it's completely different. It's just it's the same as like going to see your favorite band live yeah. and like listening to it you know on your laptop. You know, it's way like, different, dude. Way yeah, different. like I grew up watching a lot of comedy, like being a big fan and. I had the misconception that live comedy is exactly like what you're seeing for these specials. But like when you're watching a special, like that's like for a lot of these people, like that's like a year's worth of like material that they've polished and they put together and they've done two or three sets and they edited all this together. And then you go to a live show and it's completely different. Like oh yeah. it's it, just raw. It's just in the moment. Dude, it's... I went to see Joe Coy and uh, do you know who he is? Oh, of course, I oh, love Joe Coy. I saw so like funny. I used to watch him, and he's always talking about like his son and stuff. So I was, for whatever reason, I was just expecting just like more of the same dude. <laughs> he just like came out, and he was just like riffing and just fucking around and just having a good time. I'm just like, this is just such a cool ass experience. Just way different than I anticipated. It completely opened my eyes to like right. what it's like going to see somebody live versus when you're seeing their like their special and their final product. Right, you'll often see a lot more crowd work, and then and yeah. Then, yeah. Yeah, like people interacting with the the crowd, you know, like on spe- on people's specials, they usually don't want to take the chance, or they, you know, or they want to just like be able to like do their material because like there's no there's no safety net with uh, crowd work, you know, you know, like you go one way or the other, you know. Um, do you do a lot of crowd work? I a little bit. Um, kind of depends. 
Uh, I got to kind of feel out the crowd first yeah. um, and kind of see because sometimes you just have crowds that just uh, they won't give you anything. They mm. just like they're not like they just don't want to <laughs> be involved in crowd work. So they just like they won't give you any good responses. They won't talk to you, you know. Yeah. Um, but I do a little bit. That's something that since COVID, I've actually been like once COVID happened, I kind of like sat down. I was like, all right what are like the things I need to work on to become a more well-rounded comedian and crowd work was something that I really had done. I really didn't do crowd work unless I like someone heckled me and I was like having to like shut them up, you know, and I would, you know, have like that kind of, uh, back and forth. But, um, I never really engaged. I was never really the first one to engage it. Yeah. So I started doing that lately. Um, I feel like I, I, uh, I, I don't know what it is, but I, I do a lot better at it after I if I take mushrooms. Okay. So like I'll go up on stage. I take mushrooms sometimes. Go up on stage, mm-hmm. and it really just like if I do like the right amount. Sometimes it can be kind of hard to f- find that line, but <laughs> if I take the right amount, um, it just like opens up a vault of creativity, and then I just um I just connect with people okay. uh, better. And what do you think that is? I actually is? have a video on my. Um, I posted a video uh, like a couple weeks ago on my Instagram and on my Facebook of me uh, taking mushrooms and going up on stage and just riffing with the crowd for like 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. And uh, it went r- really well. Well, <laughs> obviously, I wouldn't have posted it if it didn't. <laughs> but uh, cause, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like that one went really well. But I mean, the time before and the time after it went like were awful. But uh, that one went really well. So I posted on Instagram and uh, got a pretty decent amount of shares and views and stuff. Um on Facebook and everything and Instagram, but, uh, and how does it help you connect? You think I don't, uh, you think it's like just taking away. Cause I feel like whenever I do psychedelics and stuff, like it kind of helps you disconnect from the situation and maybe be a little less judgmental. So do you think maybe just like, it just opens I up? I think, your... uh, I like, I always, I always feel, especially when I do it around people, I mean, I'll do it by myself and I'll do it around people for different reasons. Um, when I, when I do it around people, generally my, I mean, the thing about mushrooms is you, I don't know, they're nothing to be taken lightly. I mean, you have to do them, um, with a purpose, you know, you have to have intention. I, like I, mushrooms are not like. Uh, psychedelics in general are not something to just like I'm just trying to get fucked up you know like I, I always feel that you know there is such it's a ritualistic experience and I think and uh, I think they should be done with intention and generally my intention is for creativity um, but also if around people it's about like connection and I feel like a I don't know I, I feel a, a, str- uh, a stronger bond and connection with people okay. whenever I do them. And so I, um, so I, and, and then that on top of like sort of unle- unleashing like, um, uh, a, a, just a flow of creativity. Uh, I feel like just works really well on stage. And so I can kind of, it makes it easier to riff and just like mm. think of things on the spot. And I sort of get in my groove and I can just like, I feel like I just like talk to people easier and I, um, I can kind of get them to converse with me a little mm-hmm. bit better. And uh, and then, of course, when people are actually will open to conversing with you, then you usually get something from that to actually make a joke out of, mm-hmm. you know. And um, when people are – if you're not doing very good at that and people are locked up and you're, you've got no avenues to explore, you know. So I don't know. It just – um, but that's actually, I was telling you before we started recording, that's something that I'm working on right now is, uh, st- researching and becoming a little bit more of an expert on mushrooms. Cause I, there's so many, uh, preconceived notions and misconceptions about mushrooms that people have, uh, just psychedelics in general Yeah. that I'd like to be educative on in my stand up, but also kind of be able to talk about that. Cause I like, I'm very open. I mean, I'm an open book on stage. I mean, there's, I'm very vulnerable. I, I put everything out there. There's, you walk away from one of my sets pretty much knowing a lot about me and mm-hmm. you know, I'm warts and all. Like I, I tell everything the way it is, my, my life story and, uh, the pros and cons and everything, the good and the bad. And, uh, 
Um, I so like I'm very open about yeah. the fact that I'm I take mushrooms a lot, whether oh, through microdosing or doing larger doses for more spiritual experience. And so I want to be able to talk about that and also educate while right. making people laugh at the same time. Well, dude, that's important. I mean, like you said, there's there's just a lot of just bad information out there about psilocybin, and there's just so much information or just in research like being done now that is just showing how like efficacious, how beneficial it is to actually use psilocybin, whether it's for anxiety or depression or PTSD or whatever the case may be, right? Like you get stuck in these negative loops right. and it's and it's having a lot of benefits for a lot of people. Yeah, and then, I mean, in no matter, in whichever way you do it, whether if you're microdosing, it's great for, like you said, PTSD, anxiety, depression. Um, it can be good for just like a little bit extra creativity in your day and uh, brightening your mood and enhan- mood enhancement. It can be a nootropic for sure. And then you take uh, a larger amount and you uh, get more of a spiritual. Yeah. That's the closest thing I've ever felt to a religious experience. Okay. Um, and it can be really mind opening. Um, you know, like I said, you do it with other people. Um, you you can feel a much stronger connection with those mm-hmm. people and kind of learn about the human psyche. And then you take it by yourself and you kind of look inward and, uh, uh, take a look at good look at yourself and kind of learn more about who you are yeah. as a person and, you know, what maybe you need to work on. And, um, I always, whenever I do them by myself, I always kind of come across something that I'm like, that's something I need to, be more in tune with myself yeah. and then um and, and you then may- you can do heroic doses and you know really follow the white rabbit down the hole you know <laughs> see where that takes you yeah that's, you'll that's definitely talk to god then yeah yeah um We're aliens <clears throat> yeah and uh so i think and i think there's uh, misconceptions in both directions. I think people who are there's people who are scared to take them because of what they think it'll do and it, um and i want to be able to um, provide a little more comfort to those types to uh, be willing to give it a try and uh, if they know what they're doing and just know the right way to do it. And then I think there's people out there who take it for the wrong reasons and I think um, who don't really have an intention. I, I mean, because, again, like I said, mushrooms are no um, nothing to just – play around with and be and be stupid about and be irresponsible with i mean mushrooms were used in in many cultures and ancient tribes for spiritual ritualistic reasons you know and there was always intention behind it and i think there's always should be intention behind it and um you know it's not a it's not a party drug you're not doing cocaine you know you're really <laughs> here. Uh, this is uh this is something to learn more about the psyche human yeah psyche. i feel yeah i mean in general from my experience like you're probably not gonna have a, a great time partying i mean everybody's different but for me like i i, I tend to do more solo journeys if i'm going to do psilocybin right. and like uh, it, i feel super fucking anxious if i'm around a whole bunch of people right it, it's like it's like i'm taking in everybody's energy mm-hmm. and it's just like stopping with me i'm just like what the fuck is all this energy do i'm just right. like man i just need a chill place i just need a real like set and setting is so important right like how what's the environment like how comfortable are you like are you everybody's different so stepping on stage on like on psilocybin like doing shrooms beforehand i don't know if that's something i could do but like. the first time it really uh the very first time i did because I'm, I'm the same way i if i do it around people i generally want to be doing it around other people who are um like also doing it also doing it or at least know that i'm on it and have done it before and are kind of yeah uh, you feel like a... on, I, I would like to at least th- for the other person to understand that level yes uh the first so the first time i did it it really fucked with me because uh, i also didn't tell anyone that i was on it <laughs> but i noticed um the second time i went up there and i it was the first thing i said but by the way i'm on mushrooms and that immediately alleviated that sort of anxiety because yes. people could at least, I felt like there's something weird about like the feeling of that you're hiding it. Yeah, like you're trying to act normal. And and that just uh, leads you into a weird spiral. Yes. Um, but once you just kind of put it out there that you're on it, then people can sort of, they they won't really be on your level, but they can kind of um, 
assimilate to like where you're at, you know, they can and, try to empathize with you. A yeah. Little bit. And, um, and I, and that, that helps a lot. So the second time I just did that. So now whenever I do it, I just kind of put it out there Yeah, and then I go from there. Mm. Um, but yeah, I, anytime I try to like hide it around other sober people, that's when like, yeah. it, that's when it becomes really skittish and sketchy, and I get like anxiety and everything. Yeah. But I but I in general, if I take a larger amount, I like to be by myself. Um, yeah. I like to go. I like to be out in nature, and that's the one my like my favorite thing is to. Um, like I, my family lives, a lot of my family lives, um, up in the mountains in New York. Okay. And so every year I go out there, I bring a bunch of mushrooms with me and cool. I'll just take a day to just like, um, I mean, by like my, my sister's back porch is just a view of like the mountains. It's just the most gorgeous, gorgeous view. Dude. And so I'll just go out there on their swing. Like they're, they've got like a porch swing uh -huh. and I'll just sit out there and just like stare <laughs> just for hours. Take it all in. Oh, it's beautiful. Dude, I just love, yeah, just landscapes, just, mm -hmm. just textures and colors and clouds are the fucking best. Oh, clouds are, clouds are awesome. <laughs> clouds, great, yeah. clouds are pretty fucking sweet. Yeah, because they'll, they, yeah, they, clouds do the most. Like they, <laughs> they like go in and out and form shapes. Dude, and, they're changing and yeah, they're moving. Yeah, there's Dude. just, it's just, you're just like, that's like a show. Yeah, it's, it's pretty fucking rad. Even like, I could probably stare at this rug just because there's enough texture and like color change. It's right. just. I love it. It's it's just some of my favorite experiences. Just whenever you take a heavy dose and just kind of just be. Mm -hmm. Just there's one time I took seven grams and um, I fucked up because I I made plans that day. Like we were, I took this earlier in the day and like rationally, I'm like, all right, cool. Like these things will last like four, five hours, maybe six tops. Like and I'll be good to go do this thing in the evening. But like. I fucking take this and I'm I'm just like, all right, well, now I'm fucking things are coming on. All right, cool, I'm feeling good. And then before I know it, it's it's way more intense than I was like I knew I knew I was taking a lot. Like I knew I was, but for whatever reason I thought it would be okay. And um I'm like, all right, well, now it's getting really intense. Now it's getting really intense. I'm like, all right, I'm going to lay down for a second. And then, like, I'm about to, like, leave this dimension. And I start freaking the fuck out because <laughs> I'm like, man, I got stuff to do. I need to be here. I got to. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I start fighting it, right? And then, like. That's, oh, you can, yeah, that's, no, that's the worst. Dude. Yeah, trying to fight it, dude. You can't, you just have to go the flow. Otherwise, you just gotta let that's go. just a bad trip. Yeah. Waiting to happen. I don't personally call them bad trips. I like to just say they're just challenging experiences. <laughs> because, like, because right. it really, it's all about, like, what headspace are you in? Like, what, I mean, I, and I don't even think there's anything wrong with a bad trip. I think bad trips, you end up coming out with more that you needed to learn about yourself dude i there's been two experiences that were extremely challenging for me and like they're both at the end of the day as bad as they were in the moment they're still positive at the end of right. the day and i'm just like all right well i know why i experienced that i know what happened and i learned from it like i definitely took some shit away but that one with psilocybin was it was crazy because like he kept trying to like pull me away from this place and i, I reached this point to where i didn't know i felt like i died like several times over and I'm just like man like do I have kids like did, like did my childhood really happen like did I really do all those things with my best friend like all that like I started questioning all this shit yeah. and I started to freak the fuck out <laughs> but then I brought myself down I finally came back to earth and I'm just like man that was wild that was yeah. fucking wild bro yeah and then you and then you yeah the tough thing is like yeah I think uh you definitely can't make plans even if even if you had because even if you'd had like come down in time you still need the rest of the day to kind of pontificate uh to to really like yeah uh like, res let the let that resonate the integration and, period is important dude. yeah like, and to look back on it and kind of yeah um yeah, I didn't do that. I fucking went down to the landing. I was hanging out with friends and stuff. And, like, I'm trying to explain to them, like, how I'm feeling right now. And, like, they've never done psychedelics. So it's just, like, yeah, talking to a brick fucking wall. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> I, I hate trying to explain a psychedelic experience to somebody who's never had it. Because there's just, there's just a level of understanding that can only be had through, like, feeling Doing it. it. Yeah, oh, doing yeah. It. There, psychedelics are one of those things. There's no – you, you will – you just have to do it. You just, just have to yeah, do you it. You just have to. And people, I think people, uh, uh, sort of people who wait too long and kind of they psych themselves out because they hype it up too much. Like I always like to 
uh, compare it to four year old version when he says, "You're putting the pussy on a pedestal." <laughs> it's just like that. For they real. put it up onto this pedestal. Yes, called pussalaya, you know, <laughs> of, of psychedelics, and then um, it kind of ruins the experience. You know, right. you sort of just you just have to. Um, I mean, I, I mean. I say you just have to jump in, but you still want to do it responsibly and kind of, and have again have an intention, know what you're doing, be in the right setting, and everything. But you just have to jump into it. Like people will just like they're you know they want to they have like have to do all this different. Like just like no, just go, just just go. Don't overthink just, it. Just, yeah, don't, don't overcomplicate over, yeah, don't it. Don't overanalyze it. Don't overthink it. Yeah, exactly. You're overcomplicating it, and you just gotta go and experience it. And, yeah, just just let fucking go, dude. I feel like a lot of people they they're what they base their experience on is typically like alcohol, where like you feel super like you you lose fucking control. And, like, you kind of feel like you have control for whatever reason, but you don't. Mm -hmm. And I feel like a lot of people will take, like, that knowledge base of experience and they'll try to apply it to this other thing. And, like, it's – you're way off base. Right. Like, it's not no, it's like not that. not even on the same – Not even the same a, thing at all. Yeah. Like, I've had people it's tell like the me – sport. Well, it's <laughs> ball game, yeah. Exactly, dude. Like, we're, we're operating on two different planes of existence, but it's just, like, that fear – gets in mm -hmm. so yeah dude i think um that's the nice thing about mushrooms though is uh, as opposed to like acid like something like acid or dmt whatever it's like you're you're all in you know it's like you're all in uh but yeah either for what, 15 minutes or yeah. for 12 hours right but you're exactly, all in exactly um <laughs> but mushrooms are like you so people like anytime i've done it with someone like i love being like the first person to to introduce someone to it, you know, yes. like be like the shaman. Yeah, it's a good um, experience. Uh, but anytime someone has been nervous about it, I'll always like start them off with like a gram or like a half eight, something to like dip their toes into the water mm -hmm. so they can see basically what it's going to be like without like really fully immersing themselves in it. Yeah. Because then they can see that and go, okay, this is cool. I like this. I'm ready to go further. And then yes. you can take more and then yeah. kind of, you can, you know, you can move in slowly, but it's like, you don't have to take an eighth all at once and, you know, and be like, whoa, you know, like you can, you can move into it slowly. And sometimes that's what people need. Yeah. You know? I mean, one, two grams, like you can usually get a pretty good experience depending on the strain. Right. Like if it's a penis envy, you're going to, oh, yeah. you're going all the way with that's, that. Oh, that's my, I was just going to say that's my favorite. Yeah. Is it? I've, oh. I've never had it, dude. Really? Yes. Slack it. Okay. Podcast later on? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. Those are, oh, those are the best, man. Those are, those are next level. Are they? Oh yeah. yeah. It is. Uh, that is um, my my favorite. Like um, my favorite experiences have been that because that is like that's really it's you know going from you know the triple A league to, 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 <laughs> the, the big to the yeah to the big leagues. You know it's For like real. yeah it really it really is another. Um, it's like it and it it doesn't feel it's not like so different that it like feels like it's a completely new experience. It's just um um. I don't know. It's just like mushrooms on steroids. It's just like uh, it's just like a, just like you know, a step up on the same stairwell. Yeah, you know? it's rocket fuel. Yeah, it's just a step up on the same stairwell. Um, is it just really? Yeah, it 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 goes. <laughs> yeah. they're, they're, it's good. It's good. Have you had any interesting downloads or like really meaningful downloads from from your psilocybin experiences? Downloads or just like like takeaways? Oh, of course. I mean, I I man, there have been times. There have been certain trips where I mean, I. I come back down and I don't look at life the same way. I yeah. Mean, you, um, it can be, I feel like I like, it's so weird. It kind of changed on me. Um, I felt mushrooms are a lot happier for me. Than, like it used to be for me, I used to actually be a much bigger LSD fan than mushrooms because, um, LSD I always felt was more like, like brighter and happier mm -hmm. and, uh, mushrooms always seemed a little more like darker and eerie. And then it sort of changed for me. Now when I take acid, um, I end up like, I end up looking like not, it ends uh, again, like you said, even, you know, challenging experiences end up as good, you know, could be something good, you yeah. know, but a lot of times with LSD, like I just end up being like, all I can think about is like society and how disgusted I am by it, and like all like the the wrong things, you know. Yeah, I've been and, there, dude. And I'm I just get like, oh, I just I uh, every and like every everything bothers me, you know. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, with mushrooms, I sort of look at it in a, a little more positive way. Like, all right, th there's, this is how we can change it, though, and, like, things can be better. Um, but, yeah, I, mushrooms almost always have a positive sort of glow to it to me now. Okay. So, um, but, yeah, I mean, takeaways, I don't know. It's sort of hard to put into words, especially for anyone that hasn't done it before. But I always feel like... I thought of something that I had never thought about mm. before yeah. um, or at least looked at it in a completely different light, um, uh, whether it be like creative energy, um, uh, whether it be every time. I mean, every time I do it with someone, I, I immediately I, I always feel more connected and bonded to them. Yeah. And I feel like we learned a lot about each other. And I feel like I know them on a more on a deeper emotional level. Um, I, anytime I do it in nature, I, I feel it's almost in a way like an ego death, like, um, not so much, maybe not so, maybe that's a little too extreme to call it. Um, I feel like we're like, it's so like cliche and sounds so like hippie, but like <laughs> the whole, like we're all in this together. Sort we are. Of vibe. You've like, realized we're all in how this much together and like, ow, we're all a port of, part of one big you know yeah. organism we're all fucking connected dude. and yeah and um which is uh, i i always i it's, i wish i had a better way to explain it because i feel like that's so like hip oh yeah like, bro oh, yeah, so just all together like i hate sounding trees. like that but it's it really is it's one of those things that's such a beautiful experience it's such a beautiful thing to feel and experience yeah. um um but yeah, I always there's always something, whether it be something small or something big. Mm -hmm. um, there's always something that I can come away with, especially like on the the bigger doses. You know, on the smaller doses, it's it's really not that far from yeah. your sober. It's just a little extra boost. You know, yeah, a little, dude. Little uh, mood, uh, mood uh, boost. You yeah, know, enhance like your mood or fucking help like yeah. help focus you in, so right. help with productivity. Right. Especially, dude, if you get a good a good micro dose, man, like you're two in the fuck in. Right. Like it helps me like clean or mm -hmm. focus on work or whatever the right. case. I go roll jujitsu. It's like some of my favorite. Oh, yeah. I like to go deeper and go roll jujitsu. Like that's probably one of my favorite things to do. Really? When I'm, yeah, dude. It's just the best. That's interesting. I've I'm addicted to flow state. So like that, pl I'm sure you experience when you're on stage, right? Where like everything's just clicking. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, like you don't the best. That's the best part. And that's like crowd. That's why I love to do crowd work because when crowd work works you will never feel like more just like in like you're just in the way like in the yeah. tunnel like people that talk about with surfing like when you you're riding the wave right when you're riding the wave like when you're right through that that barrel like through the tunnel or whatever and that you're just like you're just seeming soaring through and like that that rush of euphoria and adrenaline of just like you're just locked in you're just whoo, just yeah. like it's going it's just a perfect stream or a seamless uh soar you know like that's how it, that's exactly how it feels but in like a more creative uh mental aspect right you know? yeah like you just fall into this place and everything just works right like everything you say is probably funny in that moment right exactly dude yeah i, I love that place like for me it's always been with sports but yeah like anytime i feel like anytime like the pressure's on or like you really care about it or just what i mean shit you can fall in the flow state just reading but you just really enjoy it like time disappears everything clicks like when you're in the moment, it's almost like an outer body experience, but like when you're in the moment, like it, it, it's just, it's so surreal. But then like when it ends, like you feel like on such a high, you feel so fucking good. And it's just like, man, that was so fucking cool. And like, right. I became a, a junkie for that. Like mm -hmm. I fought for a very long time. I've, I've always been in sports and competition. So it's like, I became addicted to that feeling very early in life. Right. Yeah. It's, it's definitely my fucking jam, dude. That's really cool. I've never, I've never really thought to do, any sort of physical or like strenuous activities on mushrooms. So that's really interesting <laughs> for me to, to hear like about like yeah. enjoying doing, but I mean, if that's, but that's also not something I, gen I generally do like, you yeah. know, like, like I would definitely, I would never take it and like go work out. Like my, really? my, 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 only, like my, my <laughs> I do that shit. Really? Yeah. I go for runs, dude. I'll fucking, I can see runs. I mean, at least you're like outside yeah, just being like the gym with other oh, people. I don't would go just be, yeah. Unless yeah. it's jujitsu. Right. Yeah. I don't know. Like that would, that, I don't know. That would be because I'm already like put off by a lot of the people in there, even when I'm sober. So like, <laughs> the mushrooms, I know I'd just be like, oh, I can't yeah. really want to be in here. Um, 
but like my 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 two things are like I, I lift weights and I play basketball. Like mm-hmm. those are my two things. Um, but that would be uh, that I could see myself doing. Like if I was like playing on an outdoor like playing basketball on an outdoor court, I could definitely because I could see myself because you know like basketball is for me is like my um, as far as physical activity. That's where I can get into a flow and just like a rhythm. You yeah. Know? Like if I'm like if you know if I'm I'm hitting my shots and stuff like that, you just fun. get into like you said that flow state. Where you right. Just, and it just feels so good. Um, I could definitely, and like mushrooms would only really enhance that. So I could definitely see myself enjoying playing basketball, like on an outdoor court on a nice day and mushrooms. And definitely I could not see myself doing (laughs) jujitsu, but then again, I couldn't see myself doing jujitsu in any, (laughs) at any point. So that would only, I spent a lot of years punching and choking people. I still do it. So yeah, I fall in the flow state when I do that shit, but how old are you? 33. Okay. Yeah. That's about what I expected um uh so wait how long have you been doing jujitsu then um i started in 2009 doing jujitsu so 12 years nice yeah 12 years doing jujitsu i started fighting mma in 2008 so i stopped fighting almost four years ago my brother-in-law has been doing jujitsu for a few years now he loves it dude it's my i'm i'm gonna do it until i die like it's gonna be a a major aspect of my life forever like last year when everything shut down pretty much all i did was teach jujitsu so like i never really stopped doing anything so it's like that's why like whenever i ask you like are you worried about catching covid because like all last year i just trained jujitsu like six seven days a week and i feel like if i were gonna if i was gonna get it at this point i would have gotten it or and if i if i have gotten it at this point it was, i was probably just asymptomatic that's, right. that's why i was asking you that because like i never really stopped doing what i wanted to do right and and in, in the form of jujitsu right but um yeah man i fucking i just i love getting like either super baked or like whether it's lsd or psilocybin like i'll go roll and i have some of my best rolls because like i get out of my own way i don't think i just do i just feel yeah that that makes sense i could see how that would um because i mean there's definitely so much mental energy to yeah. put forth into yeah. something like that too that i think people don't realize i did like one um um I did one class of it with my friend. My a friend of mine was really into it. And I did one class because he had like a free like the get like a guest like a pass guest pass. Guest, guest pass thing, and it. I'll tell you what, it was not for me. <laughs> but I I the. Uh, well, I think it, the reason it wasn't fun for me was because I there wasn't a whole lot of. I think it's probably just because I was going on a free guest pass. There wasn't a whole lot of learning and teaching involved. It was just I was just sparring with someone who knew what they were doing. Right. And I was just getting my ass kicked. Yeah, you know, because I had no idea what I was doing. Yeah, but like I, in doing it, I learned. I, I now have so much like respect and admiration for people who do it because it is, there is like there's so much more like. People think it's just beating people up, you know, and it's like, dude, there's so much mental work that goes into it and strategic uh, things you have to, uh, I don't know, like it it was just crazy. There's there's a lot to it. I, I, I came out of it. I mean, oh my god, I got my ass kicked, dude. I was just, I was sore all over for several days, and um, and I just, yeah, I was like, yeah, I. I have a lot more respect than I had before for people yeah. who do this because it is is it's not easy. No joke. And I, even for people who who realize like they like they take a class or they try it out and they realize like oh man this isn't for me because it's not for everybody. I feel like pretty Definitely much not. anybody could benefit from it, but it's not for everybody. Right. You know what I mean? So at at the very least, you kind of learn like what you don't know. Right. Because some people, a lot of us, we walk around like. You're just you just don't know what you don't know. There's and there's and that's and that's not a uh, and that's a great thing. Like I think everybody should, if you have even the slightest interest in something, that doesn't mean it's gonna be for you. But like you should go and see what it actually and yeah. And, like, once you once you learn that about one thing, you start to realize all the other things. About, like oh, there's all these other things. Yeah. That you realize I probably have no idea. Like even like how much goes into this and goes into that. But yes. Why, I mean the amount of people that you see come to an open mic uh, for their first time and because like open. I mean. Ugh. The amount of people, like, stand-up is just one of those things that so many people think they can do it because they think, oh, I'm a funny, per- like, I'm a funny person. I make my friends laugh, and you're just going up there and talking. And they have no idea. I it's mean, not it's nowhere near the same thing. Nowhere near. On- the amount of people, if offstage funny and onstage funny were the same thing, I know so many people who would be fucking, you know, 
Dave Chappelle level names. Yeah. But it's not. It's I, not I have I have lots of friends who off stage just hanging out some some of the funniest people you'll ever meet like will just have you cracking up laughing the entire time you hang out with them and then they go up on stage and just have nothing it's, it's different it's nothing it's not it's not the same thing it's a completely different experience and um so you see so many people come in and i mean some people you can t- some people like you know they're very nervous do some people come in so cocky mm. like i mean the amount of people i've seen their first time thinking like man i'm about to crush this shit and then just eat all of the shit <laughs> and never come back yeah I bet that's know? probably a ton of them dude oh, so all the time dude you can see because like as you're moving through your career right because like you're an opener and then you're a feature and then you're a headliner right is right. that is that the, yeah that's mm-hmm. the so like you can see the development of those because dude you see headliners and they come out and like they immediately grab the fucking attention mm-hmm. and they immediately start controlling the crowd. And then like, I think it was, uh, and that's, that's years and years of experience dude. worth of, I mean, you don't just start comedy and be a headliner. It's like, no, you know, you've been doing it for, I mean, I, so like I'm a, I'm generally a feature. Um, I have one club in Indiana that I headline every year. Um, and, uh, two years, two years ago, what club was that? My fr- it's called Fort Wayne Comedy Club. Shout it's, out to Fort Wayne Comedy Club. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> thank, yeah. Shout out to Michael Moses of Fort Wayne Comedy Club for giving me my my first start, uh, my start uh, headlining clubs, um, uh, which is, I mean, and it's so crazy. I mean, there's uh, that jump from feature to headliner. It's like because when you're a feature, you're doing about 25 minutes. When you're doing your headline, you're doing 45. It's a lot of material, and, and it's and not and it's not <clears throat> just. It's like you can have that many jokes but there's so there's such a bigger aspect to headlining it's more than just having all those jokes it's uh the way it's structured and the energy that you put it you like there's a whole new there's a whole completely different energy there's different expectations of you there's Mm. um there's more that you have to do in your set you also have to deal with check drop i mean there's so much more that goes into it and people who, yeah, people who headline and do well, um, I mean, they've just had years and years of experience. Um, I I do pretty well headlining at that club. I think that's just a great club. And um, But both years that I've done it, I've come away from it being like, okay, I know what I need to work. Like, these are the things that I need to work on. Yeah. Um, there's definitely spots in my – like, if I was to headline now, there's definitely – I know there's certain spots that I need to work on and, like, areas that I need to um, – like, some of my jokes just don't um, really, like, segue well with the rest of my jokes and, like, uh, don't work as sort of, like, a story arc, you know? Okay. It's, like, a lot of my material – especially being like a storyteller i sort of follow a story arc you know and, yeah like um, with your whole and then, set yeah and it kind of like yeah it goes uh it's kind of like a chronological kind of thing and then um uh and then like once i hit like 45 minutes it's like i have to throw in a chunk that's sort of that doesn't have to do with the rest of what I'm talking about. So like, it's this weird detour. Oh yeah. And like, um, so it's well, like, how can you add that detour in? So right. So like each, each year I've been able to add, been able to replace that chunk with more stuff that makes sense. You know? Okay. Um, I think since, since last year, I think I've have just enough to get through a 45 minute set that all blends together and makes sense. The first year I did it, it was probably like 10, 15 minutes that like really did not go with, with the rest of it. Last year it was about five. Okay. And then this year, um, I think like I have like a full set, but I mean, it takes, and even like so after you, you three get, years to do that. Right. Exactly. And that's, and that's just like from, and that's from my first time headlining. It's like, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, not to mention the years of, of you know Featuring just getting and becoming and a host and yeah hosting. becoming a host and then the jump from becoming a host to a feature which is the hardest the jump from becoming an MC to becoming a feature is the hardest jump why is that you um, think you know and it's really tough because um because being a host is less about being funny and being more the sacrificial lamb of the show and uh, getting all the announcements right. I mean, there, you don't have like 
no one's expecting the host to come out and kill. Yeah. Um, you are, you're sort of like you, you come out and you, you welcome the crowd and you, you do the announcements and yeah. you do the advertisements that you have to do. You do a quick 10 minutes just to get people into the mindset of comedy. Right. And then you're bringing up the, the next, the next person. Yeah. And the next person is more expected to that their job is, is to make everyone laugh. Right. You know? Start to warm up um, the crowd a little more. Right. So um, there's a little more leniency with the uh, host. And also for to become a feature act, it's more than just like people will like the, there's a lot of hosts. And I mean, I thought this, this uh, as well is that like when I was a host, I was like, oh, I have enough material to be a feature act and stuff, but, but like, it's more than just like combining. Cause even though it's double the time, it's more than just combining two hosting sets. It needs to be better than that. You right. know, it needs to be better than what you're getting away with as a host. Right. You can't have the same material. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, I or mean, the, unless you're like, you're or, just like a re, you know, you're at, you were a host. If you're doing material that's feature worthy, then you get bumped up and you can use that material. But a lot of times hosts, they're getting, they're continually getting host work, but they're not, they're like, there's a certain. They're not producing comedy at the level of a feature. Of a feature, exactly. Yeah. And they think that just because they have that much time, they can do that. It's like, no, you need to have that much time at a higher level. Yeah. And, and that can be a really hard, especially like with your home club. Um, a lot of times when you start, like that can be, your home club can be the toughest place to to start getting feature work yeah. because sort of once you are a host there, it's sort of hard to get them to, uh, see you in a higher, see yeah. you in a higher light. You start pigeonholing yourself. They yeah, view exactly. you one way. Right. And, um, so that can be really hard. It took me, it took me a few years to, uh, to build up to that. And I'm really glad that I didn't get it until I did, because if I had got it when I thought I was ready, I would have you, <laughs> I would have just blew my chance and then I would have just stayed a host for several more oh, years. Oh yeah. Uh, but because uh, because I didn't get the chance for an extra year or two, yeah. that gave me the chance to develop and actually be feature ready and then when I and then when I did get it, I just like my first I remember I like I remember um my first time getting the opportunity to feature um, so one, one of the other features, uh, couldn't do the week. And so they, they were like, Hey, give Max a chance. Like he's ready. And the manager was like, I don't know. And he was like, just, just let him do it. Like, I think, I think you're going to be surprised. I think he can do it. And so he gave it, he gave me the, the feature week. Then the first show I just fucking annihilated and it was such a amazing feeling because I got off stage and I go to the bar and the manager came up to me and shook my hand. He goes, I'll admit it. I didn't know you had it in you. Congratulations. Like you're a feature now. Fuck yeah. And so I, and then, so since then I've been featuring and, um, that's sick. Um, yeah, which is such an awesome feeling. And it was like, it's so, and I, like if I had gotten it at an earlier time, I would have just justified his feelings for me not being, <laughs> right. being feature ready. Yeah, because sometimes then, you're and, not ready. Yeah, and then I just and then I just wouldn't have gotten the chance again for probably, you know, a way longer time. Yeah, you would have set yourself back by trying to rush it. Right. I would exactly. Yeah. So um and then but like once you become a feature and you um you're producing comedy at that higher level, then um it's kind of it's not it's definitely still not like a really easy jump to headliner, but it's uh, it's a little bit closer on the playing field. A little field. bit of a smaller step. It's a smaller step because you're used to being held at a higher regard to be one of the funny people, right? Really funny people on the show. Yeah. And so that you're makes just, sense. and then and then you've just you've got more experience and you're writing at a better, higher level. You right. know, and um, you probably get access. And it's, to and it's also you. It's kind of a you know. Uh, it builds up like momentum and stuff, you know, like once you get on, you know, the, the, um, the more experience you have and the, the harder you're, I mean, if you're a hard worker, the more experience you have, the, the more you start to develop, you know, right. you develop at a faster rate, like it becomes like an exponential right. development, you know? And so you kind of get to that level to the next one higher than 
than you would from the first to the second level. Right. And I would imagine like like you you get m- more exposure to like better comedy, like right? Like you you probably get um, introduced to better comics, you get more experience, you get right. you get on more shows. Yeah, then you're sort of yeah, and especially once you you start working on the level of other features, then you have other features who have been doing it longer and you're sort of like you're now in their class, yeah. but they're like kind of like they have more experience, so they're a little bit better than you. And you you sort of like it's sort of this um, motivation to to get better and yeah. like be on that that level, you know? Right. Like, it's like a healthy competition in that right, sense. Right. Exactly. Yeah. You, now you got to go on the road with uh, with Preston from Jackass. Yeah, yeah. I went on the road with Preston Lacey from Jackass. That was a really awesome experience. Yeah. Um, we're hoping to actually because they're making Jackass four right now. <laughs> <laughs> and um, once they're done with that, and once COVID's back to uh, our, once COVID's over and like things are back to normal, we're actually uh, hoping to go back on the road again together. That'll be sick. Yeah. How'd you get connected with him? Um. So he was doing a show at a uh, at Foo Bar. Okay. Here in town. Yeah. And um, I was um, I had done a sh- I had been recommended for a show at Foo Bar early on. And, um, I did well and the, the guys who put on shows there like liked me. And so they just started asking anytime like, um, a comedy show would come through, they would ask me to open for it. <laughs> and so I, I did, like, did for, uh, Preston and, uh, he liked me and like, we like became friends on Facebook and he liked me and he saw like what, like he liked the content I was putting out and stuff. And so one day he's like, hey, I'm doing this. I mean, it's it's nothing huge, but I mean, it's like it's a mini tour. It's, you know, three cities in three days. Nice. Um, and we went as far as uh, Wichita Falls in Texas. And uh, that was like the big, that was like the big show. <clears throat> and uh, he's like, you want to come, you know, join me on the road? And I was like, fuck yeah. Dude, that's sick. And then, um, yeah, luckily I proved myself there. We went to Wichita Falls. It was a sold out show. Um, I mean, amazing room. Um Oh man, what is it called? it's called Half Pint. It's a it's a restoration hall, so it's like a it's like a bar. Uh, it's like this really like nice upscale bar, and then in the back they have this huge venue. Mm. Um, but it's like um, I sh- it's weird to say like in the back, like it's some like small room in the back. Like it's this huge. It's a restoration hall. It's beautiful. Uh, t- you know, two levels. Okay. Um, Big huge space. huge stage. Um, just be- it's a beautiful place, and uh, yeah, it was sold out. And honestly, it was one of I would say probably top five best sets I've ever had. And um, from there, um, he was like, I you know, like I gained his respect, and he um, uh, he brought me back to like he would have me come do like um, one like a one night one show sort of thing. Like he brought me down to uh, do his birthday show like oh. he, had, he put on a like for his 50th birthday he had like a big like birthday comedy show that's cool and so he brought me down to do that and then um uh and then just little things here and there and uh so we've but that was you know uh, not too long before covid so you know that we were actually going to do something again over the summer but it was covid was still you know, affect to affecting venues too much. You right. don't do anything. So, um, and then they started shooting Jackass four. So now they're once, they're, but hopefully once they're done with that movie, we can go back and do some more stuff. Yeah. But how sick is that? Right. It's like, you just, you just do one thing and then you do the next thing and do the next thing. And eventually you get good at this thing that you're doing and then you meet somebody and then it's just like, like yeah, it's, that's it's, what it's the industry sm- is. It's all about experience. And you know, sometimes it's about being in the right place at the right time. Yeah. And, being the but right it's, people, I mean, and then, but it's about being once you're in the right place at the right time, being good enough to prove right. yourself. Right, you gotta in be ready moment. for the opportunity. You gotta be ready for the opportunity. You right. know, it's um, what do they call it? Successes, luck meets uh, luck meets experience. Or what is that? What is that expression? Oh yeah, uh, when when uh, preparation meets opportunity. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's right. Um, <laughs> I'm all about all the fucking phrases. Yeah, yeah I got cliche, all, all the I cliches. Got, I got them all. Yeah. Um, so. <laughs> Yeah, it was just, you know, it's just one, of, you know, that's kind of how it is. You know, you impress the right people and um, you get more and more of that and you build connections and you you just keep, you know, going from there and um, see what you get and stuff. So, um, yeah, I've been lucky enough to, uh, I'm a, 
I've come so close to, you know, big things a lot of times. Um, I, was, I I got selected to audition for Kevin Hart's show on Comedy Central, Heart of the City. Oh, nice. Um, I didn't get it, but, you know, it was, it was awesome to be. Still. It's one of those things where, you know, there was someone there who was more experienced and more prepared than I was, and they got it, and they deserved it. They earned it. Um, I was very happy for the opportunity. Um and then I got asked to audition for Just for Laughs. Uh, it's like the biggest comedy festival in the world. It's in Canada. Yeah. Um, so I got about? to audition for that. Um, again, I didn't get that, but um, you it's, know, I had. But it was it was a great now. experience because I got to you know like the the scout for Just for Laughs was there in person, and I had a great set. Um, but he kind of he um, I he kind of put me on a, it was really awesome because, you know, he put me on a better route. Like he came up to me and he was telling me about like, Hey, like you're really funny. He was like, he basically said to me, he's like, you're really funny. You've got great jokes, but there's a lot of people out there who are really funny with great jokes. He goes like, we're looking what, like, I want to know more about you. I want you to get more personal in your life. And you know, like you have jokes about kids, but like, I want to hear more personal jokes about your kid. Like I want, you know, we need to hear jokes that, uh, if it came down to it, nobody could steal from you, you know, yeah. so personal that it's, it could only come from you. Right. And, you know, like a lot, you know, that's so how you build your brand. Was, the, right. And at the time I had a lot of jokes that were like, they were funny, but it's like if someone else stole the joke, no one would ever know, you know, it wasn't personal enough to me. Right. And so that sort of put me on a, a route of like uh, writing more personal to me. That's like very specific to me. Right. Um, and so that like his advice, like, really helped me become a better comedian and a better writer. Yeah. So, I mean, it's all these experiences that, like, you know, uh, even if the outcome wasn't exactly, you know, the the road to fame or anything, I still – it was still such a great learning experience. I learned a lot from that I became – that I, you know, became a better comedian. And now next time I get that opportunity, I'll be better prepared for it. Right. Um. So, yeah, I really hope to get the uh, chance to do the Just for Laughs audition again. And um, I feel like you definitely will if you just keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, basically, you know, it all it comes down to it. Um, hopefully, they'll. Um, it was for the. It was for the. Um, what's the St. Louis Comedy Festival? The Flyover Flyover Festival. It's like mm. the St. Louis Comedy Festival. Yeah. Um, it was for that, and then I probably Did you would the have gotten Park the Flyover Festival. No, it was, uh, it was in the Grove. It was in the Grove. Yeah. Um, and then they the they part of that was the just for last audition. Um, they had one night of it at the improv shop, and they had the other night at Helium, mm. which was the one that I did at okay. the one at Helium. Uh, and you know they were hoping to bring them back for the next years, but COVID. Right. So hopefully we'll be able to bring it back this year. See what this year holds. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but yeah, I'm you know I'm. I'm happy with the opportunities I've gotten and um, I'm happy with, you know, it's just all about your mindset you put toward it, you know, instead of being just uh, salty and bitter about not getting the opportunity, you can take that and turn it into something, you know, more positive, you know, and I I feel like both experiences, I ended up making me a better comedian, you know, which is what I want in the first place, you know, it's like I'm, I'd rather... You know, like like kind of like I was saying early on with my friend wanting to be talking about wanting to have something worth showing people before he builds his brand. That's kind of what I want to be. You know, like right. I, that's why I um I'm you know I do what I need to do on social media, but I also um I'm just constantly perfecting my craft until I really put right. myself out there because I just want to be. Once I have, once I show something, I want to have something to show, you know? Right. Yeah, we don't want to, like, ruin your brand by putting out a whole bunch of shitty material. Right. Like, while you're still in the very early stages of right. learning. Yeah, so I'm, like, it's been, like I said, it's been within the last couple of years. I've, I've actually been putting things out there. Yeah. Um, you got some funny I sets. Got, I appreciate it, man. Yeah, I mean, you talk about doing shrooms and you have to go pick up your son. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a um, good one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I threw that one out there. I have jokes about, like... I threw out some stuff about going to the country. I threw out the thing about like the when I actually went up on shrooms and I was riffing with the crowd and yeah. Um, so I'll put little things out here and there. And then um, during quarantine, I had like a little 
segment I was doing called Quarantine Stories, where I basically just recorded myself telling stories so that I was like still like writing and being creative, and but practicing. it wasn't yeah, yeah, but it wasn't really like stuff I would do on stage. Um, so it was like it was fun to just uh, keep myself busy and like that was that was cool because like I had the time to work on something that wasn't purely just for stand up but it was like good for social media but right. it kept me in that creative flow and right. stuff so that was really fun to do that was really cool i liked being able to do that um yeah do i feel like with like kind of the direction you're going with with so, like psychedelics and psilocybin and comedy it seems like um it'd be, if you like connect with like Shane Moss or something like that, be <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he, um, yeah, he's great. I still, I've been, wa- I, I, I know I should. I still haven't watched his special about psychedelics, and I really want to. I haven't um, watched it yet either. To be honest with yeah, you. Yeah, I, but I love Shane Moss. He's hilarious. Oh, he's so funny. He's so good, and I, I imagine that it's, it's awesome. And I, I, I've been meaning to watch it because of my recent, um exploration into you know becoming a little more more of an expert on mushrooms and being informative so i'm sure so i i've been wanting to watch it like a for inspiration and b to make sure i don't step on anything that he's already done you know because i like the last thing i want to do is like just do something that you know someone else has done yeah um so i also want to make sure i'm not um accidentally like on a like parallel level thinking uh plagiarizing or anything yeah. like that but the thing is that happens that's the thing it happens all the time all the and time and i mean there's people who do it on purpose because they are not very good writers but there's a lot of people who do it accidentally you know? right um and there's um or there's i mean there's lots of times what's the worst is when you came up with the idea first and you've been doing the joke for a long time and then you see uh, someone famous do it on tv uh, and you're like well now i can't do that anymore <laughs> that happened with um a dave Chappelle joke for me um i had i had a joke about that i was doing for years about um school shooter drills oh uh, fuck arm, he, armed intruder drills he, and then he one. One of the, and especially it was literally like the exact same idea the whole, like my joke was that like you're showing people you're showing these kids where to hide but if there's a school shooter, he probably goes to the school. So all you're doing is showing them where, where like, yeah. where everyone's hiding, you right. know. And then I would go into <laughs> like, I would go into, I went into a bit about that, with that like idea uh, as the premise. And then he did the exact, like the exact same thing. Yeah, and it's like, well, fuck. And it was like, well, I can't do that anymore. Yeah, yeah. At that, like, what are you gonna do at that point? Right, and it would just look, it would just purely look like plagiarism. So, um, yeah, that's definitely the hardest uh, thing is when you have a really good bit that works and then someone does pretty much the same thing right on TV, and it's like you know even if even if you did do it first it's whoever puts it on tv first yeah is... whoever gets the credit dude yep. i know you want to be original that's why you changed your name right Back. uh price with the y oh, oh that's see oh god that <laughs> that's a whole ordeal so that the story of that is uh there is another comedian named max price right and he sucks um, doesn't he Yes, fucking guy. Yep, this he was fucking this guy. guy from. Change your name, this, asshole. Uh, right, <laughs> this guy from Australia, and he's got. Well, he's the thing is, is he's a sketch comedian, mm. so he's not he's not really a stand up comedian, but he has a couple clips, and he's he's got a a he's made himself a pretty big name on doing these this uh the sketch comedy yeah. in Australia. It's on YouTube. But he has a couple clips of him like doing stand up for like his first time or whatever. And the thing that that like it, it it still wouldn't bother me that much. The problem is we look a lot alike. <laughs> like especially back uh, when this, especially when this like first like blew up, was that um, we both had long hair and wore a backwards hat. I used to always wear I always wear a backwards hat. Yeah. So did he. And uh, like of course, extra coincidence. He wore a St. Louis Rams hat. This fucking guy. He lives, lives in Australia. <laughs> the he, fuck, of bro. all things, so he wear this. He would wear a St. Louis Rams hat. So people, um, so like this was like when my show had like blown up, and I was, you know, like my like it was the best of STL showcase hosted by Max Price. So like my name is out with this, you know. And so before like going to my show, a lot of people would search me to be like, let's see if this guy's funny. Right. And they would find him. And because we look enough alike and he wears St. Louis Rams that people would think that was me. Yeah. And they would watch his stand up and be like, yo, this guy sucks. And I had people message me 
being like I had someone message me being like, Yeah, I looked at your stand up like it wasn't wasn't it was any good. They like <laughs> they mentioned something. They mentioned like, Yeah, you just like look like really like uncomfortable and you didn't know what you were doing or blah 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 and like and then I was like, Wait, are you like uh So are you guys I, I, fucking like, with me right now? Yeah, so I was like I was like uh, I was like, Wait, did you look at like this video with like are you like they like mentioned a joke that wasn't mine? I was like, Wait, you're looking at the other Max Price and like I was like, That's Fuck. not me. Yeah. And it like and so like I'm like and who knows how many people were searching me that just didn't say anything to right. me. Right. And so like it became and then I noticed that I went to his uh his comedy page and I noticed a ton of people were thought they were following me and they were fo- like oh they're following people, him yeah they like went they searched me to follow me but because his name pops up first because he's got more followers mm-hmm. his, people would uh, yeah. follow him and i was like you know what uh i have choice. to do something to where i was like there's this is just gonna continue to be a problem so i changed the spelling in my last name it's p-r-y-c-e now instead of p-r-i-c-e yeah so that at least when people search me they don't come across someone else. This fucking and, guy. Um, yeah, and it was something that I was not happy to do, um, and it's still kind of annoying. Um, it still, yeah, it still bothers me sometimes. But I mean, whatever. But at least, I mean, I know I'm never gonna have that problem again. At least, yeah. You know? So it's, I don't know. Sometimes it's just one things, of those yeah, things. It's just one of those things. You just gotta. Whatever. Yeah. Otherwise, it's a numbers game, right? And then you just gotta like try to like beat him statistically, so that way your name comes up first. Right. And that's yeah, and, and that's yeah, and I just I'm not prevalent enough to. Uh, he's just he also like like on top of that, like he has like a whole company that like works with social media marketing. Mm. So he's just like got that edge he's on me for the for, to to like he's gonna always gonna get more views or more likes on youtube and stuff and especially because like i don't have i don't do anything on youtube like i have a youtube channel so i can every once in a while put like a clip and the usually really i only use youtube for like submission clips like if i'm submitting to a club or a festival or something like okay. that so, so it's not like right i'm there. like just like i'm not like on youtube like putting shit out there you know right. it's just i have a couple clips up there you know just so that i can send it out to try to get work so i mean he's always gonna have that edge against me and people are always going to click on him thinking it's me well, fuck so, that guy, so, bro. so it's whatever I, I actually i even messaged him asking if there was a way that like there was something we could do to where like he took down just his stand-up clips so that at least when they searched me for stand-up they would only come across like it's like your, your thing is sketch or whatever but like your your stand up clips, people are confusing us, and like a lot of people are watching and following you, thinking it's me. And um, he he read the message but never responded. And I, I hate like, that I, shit, yeah, dude. I was like, All right. That's what pisses me when people think they're cool because they're on social media. Yeah, it's just like whatever. Um, but so I I was like, but I was like, man, I don't know why you want those clips up there anyway. They're fucking garbage, dude. They're like all they're doing is making you make you look bad. Make you look bad. It's like because like. It's like obviously you're known for your sketch, so like why do you want this shitty stand up up here like making you look bad? But yeah. Whatever. Um it was uh so but that's just a thing in the past now. Yeah, I didn't mean to bring up any bad blood, bro. Oh no, it's not <laughs> oh, I mean I just I um I'm friends with J C Sabala on Facebook mm-hmm. and I've I've seen him make a couple posts kinda like Busting your balls a little bit about that. Yeah, well, JC, <laughs> <laughs> we bust each other's balls a lot. J- JC is one of my best friends in comedy. He's a good dude. Uh, he's a great dude. And um, his son and I, pl- uh, his son and I, his son and my son play together oh, a cool. lot. They're very close in age. Um, and so yeah, we so we hang out a lot outside of comedy. Nice. And so yeah, um, he's been a, he's he became a close friend of mine pretty pretty early on in comedy. Um, we sort of bonded over, you know, like being new fathers and stuff. Mm. And, um, so yeah, he's been my friend for a long time. So he, uh, yeah, man, he like, he goes into, like, he goes in a lot harder than I, because like, he'll (laughs) all, like, if I make fun of him for something, I make fun of him and then it's over. He, he finds something to make fun of me for, and he will rehash it like every few months like every like, six months it's like he finds a new way a new way to like he's make calling fun back of it, on it you know yeah it's just like a constant callback like he's been <laughs> i had this one really really shitty joke and that i did once and it was just terrible and he he's 
I mean, it was about five years ago. Yeah. And he still brings it up like every six months. That's funny. Like, he's like in a new, <laughs> in a new way. It's the worst. Those man. are the best he, friends. Though. Yeah, no, I know exactly. But no, he he's great at it, man. He like he gets everyone. He's really good at roasting. Yeah, uh, especially on social media. Cause, like you know, he's really good at graphic designing and mm-hmm. stuff. So he'll turn it into memes and stuff. Man. I saw him post one not that long ago, and it was like, I think the thing he left off was like your name change. It was something about like St. Louis comics. It was, yeah, it was yeah, yeah. It was pretty funny. Yeah, uh, I remember that. But yeah, he used to get. Uh, like he used to <laughs> be like, uh, yeah, Mar- like the thing, like he used to get Mar- Kenny Kynes and Marquise Moore like all the time. Uh, he was just like had something new, and like all the time. It's really funny. It's my son getting off school. Oh, right try on. and try not to interrupt the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's fu- dude. I first saw JC. Um, I think he was like hosting at the Funny Bone like some years ago, mm-hmm. and his opening. It was like it was only ten minutes, but it was so fucking funny. I'm just like, dude, I'm an instant fan of this guy. Oh yeah, he's great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, JC is a killer, man. We got a, we got a lot of good like strong comics here in St. Louis. Yeah, people sleep St. on St. Louis, Louis is, comedy. I say that all the time. Uh, St. Louis, it's one of those scenes where comics don't uh, like from around the country like don't really know much about it and then they come here and they're like holy shit like there yeah. is this is a really strong scene i mean that's why we find that's why flyover festival has been so great for st louis because it's finally uh given us a chance to show kind of the rest like we have other comics coming in to do the festival and they see how awesome our scene yeah. is and then they tell people about it and then we've been able to bring just for laugh scouts in and they've been able to see how yeah. strong our scene is um it's really we have such like a a high like a high ratio of like good comics to bad comics like you know it's like um uh, there's so many scenes that it's like they have they have a lot more comics in general but there's so many more bad comics than there are good comics right and like we have just such a such a higher concentration of Good it's like comments. the inverse of that. Yeah. We have a lot of good ones, dude. St. Louis is like a sleeper city in general. I found yeah. like pe- it really is. People sleep on us all the time, but like I'm a big foodie. Like I love trying new food all the time. We've got we've got some of the best restaurants in the country. Some of the best restaurants in the country. Yeah, dude. we're constantly winning. Like uh, we're always like top three best restaurant city in, dude, a, in America. Exactly. Awesome food. Awesome comedy. Fucking. We're a huge sporting town. People like like the Rams left, but. The the Cardinals, the Blues, we're getting a fucking a soccer team. Like yeah. people like to support shit here in the city. Yeah, and that's honestly that's uh, why I'm so happy that I started in the city. Uh, St. Louis is such an awesome city to be supported as a as a local artist because people want to see someone from their city get big. Like right. you mentioned. John Hamm or John Goodman, exactly. Uh, Jenna Fisher, people come in their pants. Red they're Fox, like, like, yeah, yeah, people. Cedric the Entertainer, like all these people. Kathleen people. Madigan, Nikki Glaser, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, uh, Lavelle Crawford. Um, I mean, tons of people. Uh, there's been lots of people from St. Louis to get big. Um, right, exactly. Phyllis fr- from the Office, um, which yeah. I've actually uh, hung out with multiple times. Um, but. Uh, uh, they yeah they that just they love that they love when they, they there's big people from St. Louis and stuff so like I really I th- and once like for one I think it was I don't know that my show would have ever been as successful anywhere else as it has been here mm. because I really have like thrived on that whole idea of supporting local and people really attached you know been attached to that and yeah. like, can come in to see the best that St. Louis has to offer. That's why I named my show the best of STL showcase. It's about you're coming to, you're, you're seeing the best people in the city and you're supporting local and like all this thing. And, um, so I really, uh, my show really thrived off of that idea, um, that St. Louis loves to support their, their locals and their hometown. And also the scene, the St. Louis comedy scene is, I mean, it's one of the best scenes you can possibly start in and develop in because um, it's big enough that there's lots of opportunities. We have now with that, um, the next, the second Funny Bone opening up, now we have three big clubs as well as three other small, uh, like more independent clubs. Right. 
Um, so you mm-hmm. have like six clubs total, and then you you're not too far from Springfield. Uh, so you have like the Blue Room in Springfield. You have Laughing Gas in Cape Girardeau. Um, there, among other things. Yeah, so Columbia is not that far away. There's some clubs in Columbia, Missouri, right? Or no? Uh, is that a shitty city for comedy? Uh, there used to be more. Uh, there's not like Deja Vu is not open anymore, so mm. that's a little bit tougher. Uh, there used to be a really cool room for in uh, comedy Columbia, but COVID shut it down. Mm. So uh, there's not too much for comedy in Columbia, but I mean you're still not too far from a lot of big uh, clubs in other cities. Right. Um, and then. There's a lot of independent shows going on. I mean, a uh, ton of open mics, ton of independent ranch showcases that you can do. So there's a ton of opportunities, but it's small enough that it's a community. It's not like this cutthroat, like everybody's competition, right. you know, like it is in like New York and L.A. You know, right. it's like it's small enough that every that um, it's big enough that everyone can get opportunity, and small enough that it's more of a community. Everyone wants to see everyone succeed and thrive so we're constantly helping each other and um you know like that we're there for each other to we just want to see each other get better so we're always like working with each other you know oh, tight so it's um yeah it's it's a real very, community yeah exactly it's tight knit um it's you know it's like a it's like a little family um and it's a great place to to become a great comedian and learn how to develop hone your skills and then from there you move on to bigger cities like you know you can um uh, some a lot of people will go to chicago for a little bit because that's like a stepping stone and then from there you go to new york or la new york or la is like the spot for a lot. right yeah new york is like if you just want to be if you just want to become a stand-up comedian like that's like your thing i go to new york la is like you like to do you like to do comedy but you also want to act or maybe write some more or, right yeah i guess yeah. there's probably new york, quite a bit is, of writing new york, new york, new york is the the best city in the world for stand-up though is it yeah there's tons of fucking just so many clubs yeah there's so everywhere. many clubs um, all in basements so many... all in the basements of all those right buildings. or attics yeah um so yeah there's there's tons of um opportunity i mean nice there's just a lot going on there Right on. Well, dude, let's wrap this up, man. Um, this has been such a fun conversation, dude. Yeah, it's been great talking Thanks, thanks for taking this time, dude. Yeah, of um, course. Thanks for having me. Uh, what I'm going to leave it to you, dude. Is there anywhere like, you want to like direct the people? They can check you out, things yeah, coming so, up? Yeah, um, so if you you can follow me on Instagram at maxpriceisme. It's M-A-X-P-R-Y-C-E-I-S-M-E. Maxpriceisme. Um, I, I, put, I've, you know, I, I post my you know, uh, jokes on there. Um, I have clips of my stand up. I have the, the video that I was talking about where I was riffing. I was on mushrooms riffing. Um, I'm going to be putting some more stuff up soon. Um, you can also see every, I always, I'm posting about the shows that I do at the funny bone, the monthly show I run there. Um, and, uh, anytime you see a date that you want to, um, that you want to come out, you can just come to the funny bone and mention my name and you uh you and your friends will get in free so you can see a really awesome show for free um and then um or you can follow me on facebook uh it's just max price um i've got a comedy page and i've got a personal page um so like i'm always you know i'm posting on both you know so you can follow either of those i don't really get on twitter i wouldn't follow me on twitter <laughs> um, I, I very rarely post on there uh, but Instagram and Facebook are definitely the best ways to to get a hold of me. And, you know, you can catch my clips and my jokes and my um, my dates and stuff on there. Dope. And, of course, I'll put that in the show notes to make it easy for people. Okay, cool. All right, man. Dude, Max, thanks, brother. Hey, thanks for having me, man. All right, Great everybody. Time. Until next time.